Franklin was the first person to build an electrostatic motor, the world's first kind of electric motor. There were a couple of different versions of the motor he built. His were quite large, being about four feet across. We're going to look at some small electrostatic motors driven by Leyden jars. First, we have to charge Leyden jars. We have to charge two Leyden jars by the hook, which we do by using the tube and charging them by the hook and repeating that process. And then we have to charge several Leyden jars by the coating. Here, we set the Leyden jar in an insulating stand. This time, we pick it up by the hook and charge it by the coating like that, repeating that several times until we have four fully charged Leyden jars ready to go. We're going to make a pivot for the electrostatic motor out of a piece of foam and a sharpened pencil, setting that on an aluminum foil base. The rotor is made from the top of a plastic champagne cup. Across the bottom of the champagne cup, we mount a strip of paper with a hole in the center to act as a, as a lower bearing. We have put uh, brass fasteners on the rim of this, spaced around the rim. Another one is made by having pieces of uh, aluminum foil glued to the rim. Putting this on the bearing, making sure that it's nicely balanced. Now we have to bring in the charged Leyden jars. We'll put one here, charged by the coating, one here, one charged by the hook rather, one here charged by the coating. Opposite that, we'll put another one, and opposite these, another one, so that we alternate the Leyden jars around the perimeter. And now we simply have to adjust them until the electrostatic motor begins to operate. We will try the other rotor now and see how that does. You can also make these in larger sizes. And it's simply a matter of finding the right position. Franklin made another kind of motor in which instead of using external Leyden jars to store the charge, he stored the charge on the motor itself. Here is a large plastic dish uh, covered with aluminum foil on the bottom, covered with aluminum foil on the top, with a champagne glass uh, upside down as a rotor. Uh, out on the edge of the uh, wheel, I have mounted little uh, bells which are pressed on there. One bell connects with the top foil, the next bell with the bottom foil, and so on, alternately around the wheel. This can be charged by setting it on top of a, an insulator. We can charge it by the tube in the following way. I touch one of the bells connected to the bottom while bringing the tube near one of the bells connected to the top foil. And I repeat that process many times. Alternatively, I could use the electrostatic generator that you have built before to charge it, connecting the prime conductor to the top and connecting the base or the collector to the bottom. Once we have done that enough times so that it's charged, many more than I just did, we mount it on the pivot, and then we'll simply bring a bunch of empty soda cans near it. Notice that we've got an insulating base here, and if this were charged, we would now expect to be able to start the motor going. So what happens is that 
this can will get charged, say, positively by one of the balls, oh, right. and then it'll get, uh, lose that charge and get charged negatively by the next one. So the charge is continually being transferred right. from the top foil to the bottom foil over time. Franklin said his own wheel moved fairly slowly under these conditions. Yeah.